and welcome. David Levin here at Raise Your Inner Game today. This is Tuesday, so we're talking sports, playing sports, and helping kids who play sports. And the subject today is the yips, how to fix the yips. If you don't know, yips are when an athlete suddenly loses the ability to do something they've done forever, some common everyday move like serving in tennis or pitching in baseball or putting in golf. For some reason, all of a sudden, they can't do it anymore. And this is for real. They literally lose the ability to throw to first base or get the serve in or putt straight. Or at least they lose the ability to do it consistently. It's crazy to see when it happens and to think about it, right? I mean, how is it possible? It's something they have done thousands and thousands of times. They've worked on it and practiced it, and they're actually great at it. All of a sudden, they can't do it anymore. And of course, you wonder, what's going on, right? How is it possible? And they desperately wonder, how can I fix it? Just imagine what this is like for them emotionally, because this always happens in public, right? This isn't the typical mental game issue that happens in our head. This is in front of everyone. Embarrassing doesn't even begin to cover it. It's devastating. It's mortifying. So I'm thinking about this because I read a great article about it recently in the New York Times. I'll link to it below. There were several examples of athletes at different levels, different sports. And one interesting thing is the range of outcomes. Some athletes, there was a story uh, of one, it was a baseball player in the 80s, a second baseman for the Dodgers. His name was Steve Sachs. He couldn't throw to first base, which is something you need to do <laughs> as a second baseman. And I don't mean he never could do it. It was just like unreliable. He made something like 24 errors in the first half of this season, which is, of course, really bad. He was able to turn things around by basically putting in a lot more practice. Others, it never gets fixed. The main subject of the article is a woman named Eileen Linehan. I hope I'm saying that right. She was a star softball pitcher, had a great career, but she couldn't make overhand throws to the bases. In four years of college, it said she never made a single successful overhand throw to a base. Isn't that just the strangest thing? What I loved about her story was that she learned to work around it. As other teams learned about her problem, they would try to take advantage of it by bunting, so she'd have to make the throw. But she worked on making underhand throws to the bases and also pitching in a way that made it harder for them to bunt. And then during her pro career, this was in Japan, they worked out a play where she would flip the ball underhanded to the shortstop who would then make the throw to the base for her. That's a great story. But again, it's just hard to get your head around how this is possible. So what does cause it, and how do you fix it? The article doesn't say much about what causes it. It mentions one other pitcher. Uh, it started for her after she hit two batters in a row. After that, she couldn't do it anymore. Or at least, again, you know, super inconsistent. No mention of the cause beyond that. But reading between the lines, it sounds like the pattern is that some sort of fear in the moment comes up and knocks them off their game. Normally, with fundamental moves like this, athletes are functioning unconsciously on muscle memory, right? They've trained so much that they literally don't think about it at all, and that's exactly what you want. That is the key to peak performance. When something pulls us off into our head, that's when things break down. And it sounds like the yips are probably just an extreme version of that, or at least most of the time. Something has broken their confidence about this particular move. And it's not really the move, it's the situation. And whatever thought and emotion that is, it keeps coming up in the moments and keeping them from doing it. The stories she tells of people getting over it vary. The biggest thing she recommends is talking about it openly, which is not something you'd expect, or at least I didn't expect. But it says to me that a big part of what's pulling them into their head is the social anxiety of what people are thinking, of the shame of making this mistake in front of everyone and letting people down and all that. Talking about it openly, I can see where that would remove some of that pressure, and then the worry about it will have less power over them. The story with Steve Sachs, Steve Sachs, sorry, the baseball player, getting over his yips by practicing more, he already knew that move, right? I mean, the throw to first, he'd been doing it basically all his life. But something was getting into his head in the moment that told him he couldn't do it. And so practicing a ton 
rebuilt that confidence for him, doing it over and over and over again, renewed his knowledge and his belief and the evidence that he could actually do it. So he was able to use that to overcome these moments when he was worried that he couldn't. Another example that helped with a different picture was squeezing her glove hand to put the pressure on that side of her body so she could relax her throwing side. Honestly, I wonder if that had to do less with relaxing her throwing side as it did with getting her attention on something other than the worry. That's the main thing you need to do for every kind of mental game issue I've seen. The solution is to get yourself out of your head and back into the moment. In the classic mental game book, the one that started it all, the inner game of tennis, back in the 70s, the main suggestion there was to put all your attention on the seams of the ball. Don't think about anything else, just the seams of the ball. A variation is to focus on the feeling of your feet, the pressure of them on the ground. All those things are fundamentally doing the same thing. They're pulling your attention away from the negative thoughts, out of your head, and bring you back into the moment where you can just let your body do what it knows to do. Personally, I haven't had someone come to me yet to fix with the yips. I'm guessing because so far we've worked mostly with younger athletes. The yips do seem to happen later as they get farther along in their career. But anyway, based on this article, I expect that our mechanics-based approach would be super helpful, maybe more than anything else. If the problem does ultimately come down to something pulling them off into their head in the moment, the material in the Raise Your Inner Game book and the Sports Academy training will be perfect for fixing this problem. All right, that's what I wanted to talk about today, how to fix the yips. The trick is to figure out how to keep from getting pulled into your head in the moment, and there are several things you can do that should hopefully help you with that. All right, if you play sports and want to boost your mental game, or you have kids in sports and want to help with theirs, check out our Mental Game Starter Kit. It's a great set of resources to help anyone take their mental game to the next level. Go to RaiseYourInnerGame.com, scroll to the bottom, you can learn about it and register there. It's all free, of course. We also offer private and group coaching. You can learn about at the site. If you like what you heard on today's show, please do tell your friends, invite them to join us, and rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. That's how people find the show and get the mental game charge we all need. If you'd like to support the show so we can keep things ad-free, please click the Buy Me A Coffee link below, and thank you for that. Also, if you're listening on audio and you like video, we post all our episodes on YouTube as well. There's a link to that in the notes. And finally, we'll close with Steve Prefontaine, the great runner, and his quote from the end of the Raise Your Inner Game book. To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice your gift. That's what we're doing. We're working to be our best, help our kids be their best, both on the field and off. So keep up the good work. And we'll see you next time.